so let us try to understand about the brief agenda of this session so brief agenda of this session is to have a discussion on the fpga architecture that is we need to understand about the fpga architecture so that we can select the fpga various fpga resources and overview of the fpga resources we need to understand then what is importance of the functional blocks which are the various functional blocks which are available for that fpga device and what is their importance then what are the connectivity resources that is io resources input output resources input output blocks what is their architecture and fpga ordering information how we can order the fpga so if you recall we have a design planning stage that is specification understanding specification extraction architecture and micro architecture design during that stage as initial gate count estimation is available we know the resources needed we know the functionality of the design we know how many ios are needed for the design then we know the internal memory requirements for the particular design so most of the parameters are visible during the architecture and micro architecture design phase due to that design planning phase is very much important for any kind of product or for your project work or for any kind of research and development work so by considering that what is important is that whenever we try to select a fpga there are various uh, devices various fpgas which are available in the market that is spartan series is there vertex series is there kintex is there then high end fpgas are there so what you need to do is that best practice to know about them is that you can go to zilinx website then try to download the data sheets of the various fpga devices like your spartan fpgas vertex fpgas kintex and other pink zinc fpgas soc uh, prototyping fpgas that is high uh, density complex fpgas try to understand their architecture try to understand the resources and then you can choose the fpga for your design and implementation so now let us move ahead so objective is to understand about the fpga architecture that is which are the important functional blocks of this fpgas which we can use as a resource okay that means we are using that as a resource means whatever my rtl design is there that will be at the higher level we will get a gate level netlist and tool will use the gate level netlist during design and implementation and fpga tool will try to map the logic using fpga resources on a fpga fabric so to understand much more about that you can download the data sheet of this pattern 6 family uh, and try to understand various fpg res resources so at the higher level we have discussed about we have resource as a various blocks on this fpg fabric these are configurable logic blocks which are used for combinational and sequential design then we have io blocks on the periphery of this fpga we have connection resources where connectivity can be established between two clbs or multiple clbs we have block ram dedicated memory resources then we have dsp blocks dedicated processor cores we have clock management units which are not shown here clock management tiles then we have other resources like a memory controller pci express transceivers and ethernet usb controllers and all that for high end fpgas so we have switch matrix programmable routing connections vertical lines horizontal lines all that so let us try to understand what is there in spartan 6 lx9 device so now let us try to understand the fpga resources of the spartan xc6s lx9 minus 3 tqg144 what is exactly meaning of this xc6s lx9 Minus three TQG one forty four that we'll discuss in the ordering information of this FPGA. This is my device. This is my package, and these are number of pins. So, which are the various resources? So, first important point is that how many logic cells that FPGA FPGA has? Okay, number of logic cells. Name itself indicates that it is LX nine nine thousand logic cells. This FPGA should have. then how many configurable logic blocks then how many dsp slices 
which are used for dedicated DSP applications like uh, multiplication, then uh, DSP algorithms, that is digital signal processing, high-end applications. Then whether this FPGA has a VRAMs, that is block RAMs or not, which is block of memory. Then clock management tiles, how many clock management tiles this FPGA has, how many main memory controller blocks this FPGA has, how many total I.O. banks this FPGA has, then how many maximum number of user I.O.s which are available in this FPGA. So if you consider Spartan 6 LX9 FPGA, we have number of logic cells, number of CLB blocks, number of DSP blocks or DSP slices, we have block RAM blocks, then we have clock management tiles, memory control blocks, to number of I.O. banks and number of user I.O.s. So from data sheet, let us gather that information. So number of logic cells, these are 9152. So as stated earlier, it is LX9, 9 indicates 9000 logic cells. If it is LX16, then that FPG has almost around 16,000 logic cells. If it is LX25, that FPG has 25,000 logic cells. So depending on the requirement of your design, you can choose the FPGAs. Now consider the scenario that design needs 4000 to 5000 logic cells, then we can think about use of this FPGA, Spartan 6 LX9. And we should use the 60 to 70% of the FPGA resources, that is the thumb rule. Then another important resource that is configurable logic block. So we have n number of configurable logic blocks in Spartan 6 FPGA. These logic blocks are used to infer the combinational logic and sequential logic. So let us try to understand how many number of configurable logic blocks are available within this part of 6 FPGA. So number of slices. So each CLB has two slices. So 1430 slices which are available for this part of 6 device. Then number of flip flops, that is number of registers. 11,440 registers are available in this FPGA device, Spartan 6 device. Then we can use the CLB resources as a distributed RAM. Okay, so maximum distributed RAM capacity is 90 KB. And these resources are useful to implement a combinational or sequential logic. That means tool will try to infer some combinational logic or sequential logic by using the RTL design. Then another important point is that suppose my design has some dedicated DSP based applications or DSP based algorithm then I need to have a DSP slices. So Spartan 6 is a efficient FPGA which is having 16 DSP slices. So there are 16 DSP slices in this FPGA and they are used for high computational multiplication or high speed multiplication or high speed DSP applications. So we have dedicated sessions on all these resources and these sessions will be very much useful during your EDA tool based sessions. Then another important resource is that if you recall during specification discussion or during architecture and micro architecture discussion we have discussed about the role of the memory that is internal memory external memory. So we should have the internal memory in my design and to have an internal memory for my design we have block ram resources so number of blo block ram so number of vram blocks are 32 each block size is 18 kb then maximum addressable vram capacity is 576 kb okay so depending on the memory requirement we can think of selecting this kind of fpgas if suppose more than 576 KB of memory is needed, then at that time we can go for the higher end Spartan 6 series. Uh, there are higher end Spartan 6 series which has 150K logic cells and higher end memory capacity or other kind of resources. So depending on the requirement you can select the FPGA. Then for every design clock network plays very much important role because we need to have a uniform distribution of clock skew or zero clock skew. There should not be any noise in the clock clocking network. So there are dedicated CMT that is clock management tiles. So number of clock management tiles this FPG has total number is two. Then dedicated memory controllers which are available 
in that particular FPGA. So Spartan 6 FPGA has a memory controller as a resource, powerful resource. So consider the scenario that I have external memory, I have a field programmable gate array and if suppose memory controller dedicated block is not available in that particular FPGA, then there will be additional overheads on a team as well as on the design because we need to spend a lot of time to design this memory controller. So instead of that, we can use this memory controller block as a dedicated block, can establish a read write transactions with the external memory and we can use this depending on the requirement. So number of memory controller blocks this FPJ has two. Then this FPJ has four IO banks, maximum user IOs, are 102 for LX9 device. So total IOs are 144. Among them only 102 are available for the user. Remaining 42, they are used for some dedicated operation or dedicated purpose. Now this is about the overview of the resources. So which are the main important resources which FPJ should have? Each FPGA should have the clocking network that is clock management ties, then it should have configurable logic blocks, IO blocks, internal memory, DSP slices for DSP operations, memory controllers, so programmable routing, switch matrix, programmable resources, they are, they are always in the field programmable gate array. Now apart from this, what is needed? Can you guess? Can you imagine? So, if suppose I am a designing system and I need to transmit a data, I need to receive a data, okay, or I need to have some sort of uh, some endpoint solution, okay, then what we need to do is that we need to consider about other resources. So, Spartan 6 is one of the powerful family because it has a lower power, it is manufactured using 45 nanometer process technology then core voltage is almost around 1 volt to 1.2 volt lower static power dynamic power it has a uh, micro blaze processor also then apart from this high end family has the pci express as a important resource that is endpoint blocks or pci express zero in lx9 fpga but zero in LX9 FPGA but maximum one in higher end Spartan 6 device. So if you go through the data sheet then you can get the information about how many PCI Express blocks are available for the higher end Spartan 6 devices. Then number of transceivers, transmitters and receivers that is zero in LX9 FPGA but maximum eight in higher end Spartan 6 devices. Okay, so this is the overview of the Spartan 6 device. Getting this point. Now, you may be thinking that why it is important. See now, if we go through the design planning phase, we know the resources needed. Without selecting the FPGA, if we try to move ahead for the RTL design phase or for the design and implementation phase, then what happens is that it is meaningless. Because suppose for my design needs only 5000 logic cells or 4000 logic cells, then why I will pick up some FPJ which has a 100k gates? It is additional cost, okay, and it will increase my expenditure. So, to avoid that, we should consider that, okay, how many logic gates my design needs, and depending on that, I can select the field programmable gate array. In higher end, uh, or if we consider another scenario also that my design needs uh, 1 lakh gates and my FPGA has only 50,000 gates, then at that time it is meaningless because I will not be able to test my design. So I need to have a FPGA which has a more number of gates because I will be using only 60% of the resources. So if FPGA has a 2 lakh logic cells and my design needs only 1 lakh logic cells, that is fine. I, I am having 50% of a device utilization. Yes or no? Remaining resources, that is 10%, 20%, I can use for the built-in uh, self-test or for debugging purpose and all that, all, all that kind of logic, okay. So during the project work, all this understanding will play very much important role. As we are dealing with moderate 
gate count designs or moderate gate count processor logic designs or moderate gate count state machine controllers. I have selected the Spartan 6 LX9 FPGA and this FPGA has 144 pins. Now how we can order this FPGA, FPGA ordering information? So XC6S LX9 minus 3 TQG 144. This is my field programmable gate array. What is this XC Xilinx? XC stands for Xilinx. 6S is Spartan 6. It has 6 input lookup tables. LX9 low power that is static and dynamic power is very low. Core voltage is almost around 1 volt to 1.2 volt. 9 indicates almost around 9000 logic cells. So this is device type. So this is my device type. Okay. Then minus 3 is a speed grade. So this FPG has minus 3, minus 2, minus 3N as a speed grade. Then TQG is a package. So TQ is a package. So there are various packages like uh, you uh, may have noticed about uh, I have PQ, VQ, HQ, TQ. Okay, these are quad flat pack. So quad flat packages and you can get more information about these packages from the data sheets. Then G stands for PB free. Then 144 number of IOs. Get this point. So you can order the FPGA for your design, for your product design, or for your project work, or you can purchase a board of Spartan 6 and you can download the Zhiring's ISC 14.7 have a setup ready at your house so this is very low cost solution basically for any kind of design validation or for testing of a design in actually uh, in actual field or for testing of design in a field or for research and development so fpg ordering information already we have discussed whatever this xc6s lx9 minus 3 tqg144 device type is xc6s lx9 speed grade is minus 3 package type is tq which is type of uh, that is qfp that is quad flat pack then ios are 144 these are the resources which are listed it has a configurable logic blocks or clb slices each clb has two slices then IOBs, number of IOBs, connection resources, routing resources, switch matrix, then BRAMs, horizontal lines, vertical lines, then uh, clock management ties, DSP blocks, memory controllers, which are not shown here. High end Spartan 6 devices has transceivers and PCI Express. Getting this point. Understood. So this is about FPGA. Spartan 6 overview and ordering information of the FPJ. Then why to wait? You can order this FPJ board and try to use that to design and implement your ideas. So session conclusion. So what we have discussed, we have discussed about resource overview and FPJ architecture. The important functional blocks of Spartan 6 LX9. Then FPJ ordering information. In the next session, what is our goal? Now, this is not sufficient. This is just an overview of your field programmable gate array or architecture overview. Which are the resources which are available in that Spartan 6 LX9 device? Okay. Now, we need to understand in depth, that is, look inside the configurable logic block. Try to understand what are the various blocks of the CLB or what are the various resources of the CLB that is lookup tables are there, multiplexers are there, resistors are there, try to understand in depth about them. In, in similar way for other resources also we should have an in depth understanding. So next session on the understanding of the CLB block and architecture of CLB block of Spartan 6 FPG. You will definitely enjoy this session useful for your uh, tool based sessions, your assignments and project work.